Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. In my lifetime, I have seen the Cold War between the East and the West dissolve. We welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together. In my lifetime, I have seen the Berlin Wall come down. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence. In my lifetime, I have seen apartheid dismantled. It is absolutely important that you have the knowledge to serve your country and your people. In my lifetime, I've seen the man of color in the White House. And out of many, we are one. That while we breathe, we hope. And those who tell us that we can't, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, we can. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. In my lifetime, I've seen grassroots movements topple governments through the use of social media. I want freedom. Freedom. Only freedom. freedom. We can come together to heal segregation and redirect civilization to the celebration of diversity in oneness. We can make it happen. I am Brother Ishbatete, and I believe that world peace is possible in our lifetime. It begins with you and I now. Good morning. Tell somebody, welcome to the Day of Power. The topic is on meditation. Tell them, tell somebody. Yes. So we're learning the art and the science of meditation. Can we declare what we see on the screen together? Yes, our vision is that of a unified world. Creating this world, creating that unified world has not been easy. Ethereans have taken a very bold position to make this happen. Are you ready with my song? May you please give me this song. And as they're singing this song, I'd like you to contemplate.
Amen. 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 If I can tell somebody he is traveling wrong, for the sake of our vision of a unified world, we have kept our lips quite tight. Sometimes when we see even error going on, we don't want to appear like we are telling somebody your method is not right. And in so doing, we've also allowed error to grow so many wings. And we see it sometimes on television, and sometimes you feel like, uh, no, no, n- no. The work is becoming harder if people are soaked in such error, such degree of lies. So somebody must wake up and teach. Years ago, uh, you were condemned for teaching meditation. Am I right? I don't hear you. And when they wake up to realize that uh, meditation is the key, they now call it quiet time. They are going to have quiet time. They don't call it meditation. They call it what? Quiet time. Quiet time. But somebody must speak so that somebody will wake up. Whatever name do you call the rose, it will give the same fragrance. Let them call it by whatever name and practice it. That is the most important thing. Because many times you are shaking to teach somebody that, look, the path is meditation. In fact, the highest of spiritual practice all starts with meditation as the formula. And when Jesus will teach even the Lord's Prayer, he said, in this manner, in this way, enter into your closet, shut the doors to your outer senses, and then um, speak to your father in secret. Today, instead of speaking to God in secret, it's about making a disturbing noise. When you ask them, they say, God says you have to make joyful noise unto the Lord. But Bible says make joyful noise. It didn't say make disturbing noise. There's a difference between joyful noise and disturbing noise. And there are laws in this country that states that your noise must not go beyond a certain decibel, all right? And the only time they also allow will be Sunday between certain times. But today, with impunity, error is happening. But today, I want to invite you to the practice of meditation once again. I'd love to be very brief and give you the opportunity for interaction. So you can speak to the meditation challenges, issues you've had. Sometimes we have some myths about meditation. Last week we cleared a few that people thought that meditation means uh, Eastern religion or Eastern worship. We realize that meditation is very African, that our elders have even a whole period of 30 days ban on drumming and noise making because the elders are in meditation. Every family elder, then clan elder, then the community elder, they go into silence to meditate. So meditation. Some also think that meditation means sitting and doing some chants. Chants simply means song. Yes, you can start meditation with some music or to calm you, but meditation is to enter into the silence and experience uh, solutions to your problems. We have contemplative meditation. We have a, a awakening or enlightenment meditation where you experience your true God state. And scripture told us in Psalm 1 that those who meditate, Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3, that those who meditate, they are those who prosper. They are like trees planted by the riverside whose leaves flourish. And whatsoever they do, they flourish. Their leaves will not wither. Those who meditate on God night and day. So we have God as a spiritual law. Last week we studied, we realized that there are laws for soccer and there are laws for basketball. So you can ask yourself, what is God's spiritual idea for me? Then you meditate on that. What is God's social idea? All right, am I also to marry or not to marry? Sometimes everyone is marrying, I want to marry too. But is that life's social idea for, for you? Everyone is having 100 friends, must you also have 100 friends? and so on. So what is God's law or uh, God's idea about my physical life, my physical body? What is God's idea about my mind and feeling? What is God's idea about my health and my beauty? In fact, sometimes even the sickness or illness is a channel through which some glory is happening. You know, sometimes you're going through some tests and God, when you meditate on the test you are going through, God will say, relax, I'm only preparing you for a great and beautiful testimony. What do you say to God? I accept it. Yes? 
you're going through trials and God says, I want to tell a story of triumph. When you are going through trials, God says what? I want to tell you a story of triumph. Meditation makes you hear the voice of God. Are you in the pit? You meditate when you are in the pit and then you hear the voice of God telling you, Lo, I'm preparing you for the palace. Yes? I'm preparing you for the palace. So meditation is what we need to practice. It must be a regular practice. And scripture in Isaiah 30 verse 15 says that, For they say that the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, the one of Israel, the Holy One, not only two, Holy One of Israel, that in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in what? Confidence shall be your strength. And I love the last part. What did he say? But you would not. Tell somebody. Wake up. And start doing it. Practicing quietness. In quietness and in confidence. But you would not. You would not. Bible is saying you would not. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Hello? So the two types of meditation, contemplative and then realization or enlightenment or uh, awareness meditation. That is the second one. So these are the two. With uh, contemplative meditation, we use it often when we want to solve a problem. There's an issue and you say, I'll think about it. Then you make time, you think about it. And then solutions begin to come through you. Then we have the realization or awareness meditation. You are just being aware of your oneness with spirit, like we did this morning. I took you through both types of meditation, contemplative meditation. Then we came out, and then we also went into realization meditation. Now, meditation is the practice of listening to God. The greatest prayer is not what you say to God. What did I say? But what you are able to hear from God in the silence. The greatest prayer is not all the many things you say. For every one minute of what you say, spend 10 minutes listening. Tell somebody on your side. Or the one with the bigger nose, tell the person by your side. Don't write, I say tell. Yes. Yes. For every one minute of prayer, sometimes you pray, and by the time you finish your prayer, you've forgotten what you even prayed for. But you want God to, to remember and do it for, for you. Am I right? So when you pray, it's good. All the prayers are to quieten you, to calm you, to take away the tension, the stress, and bring you to a state of listening. Prayer is not a one-way street. You have spoken enough. When will you hear what God is saying? When you finish prayer and you don't hear what God said, you didn't pray. Did you hear me? So when you, you come, you tell me, well, actually, I was, I've been praying, I've been fasting and praying. I said, what did God say? Good morning. If you didn't hear, then you did not pray. Because prayer is not a one-way street. You said something to pure spirit, to the creative love intelligence coded in the universe that we call God, and you must be able to hear. When you are in pain, when you are in the pit, you must pray. When you are in, the, in pain, you don't focus on the pain, you meditate. We learned that la last week. All right? When you are in pain, you meditate on the pain by lifting up your eyes onto the hills. Bible says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence comes my help. I won't lift my eyes to the problem. I will look for where solution comes come from? What is life's idea? I am a very angry person. What is life's reason for giving me an angry disposition? What must it be used for to glorify God and in what way? There's nothing wrong in you being angry, but how do you use it? The way you use your anger. Let me be angry on my state of mediocrity, lack and limitation. This does not befit me. Then you get up and you do something. Spirit will tell you, turn your anger on your vision of mediocrity. Whenever you think of anything negative, be angry with yourself. How
How dare you think this? I've shared with you some time ago how a negative thought came through me, and I have to quickly fight it. I've, you have to be angry with the negative thought. So even anger has a benefit, all right? So meditation gives you access to your inner resources. And please, meditation is not something you do once a while. For you to make benefit of meditation, you have to meditate at least twice a day. Make it a habit. A time of listening to God. A time of turning my attention within. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. In other words, the power, the love, and the presence of God is within you. Meditation is the time you turn your attention within to know what am I like within me? What is my true nature? What are the answers? So you start experiencing you. If you don't see God in the daytime, you won't find him in the nighttime. If you don't practice meditation, when you are in trouble and you sit down to meditate, it won't work. We learned last week sometimes you are meditating and you end up doing cockroach meditation, yes? But when you meditate regularly, you are able to take charge over your thoughts. A great program I will encourage everybody to participate in is mind mentoring. It helps you to gain access to your mental plane and to manage the information in your mental plane. Tell me, and I will tell you clearly, that less than 1% of humanity have got access to their own mind. You want to control people, but you don't know how to control your own mind. Thoughts keep racing in your mind, one chasing the other, and you have no control. Yet, you, you, you call yourself a, a human being. You are a human being when you can gain access to your own mental laboratory, identify the thoughts in you, their taste, their sensory values, and manage them. Mind mentoring takes you to the level where you can even see a thought and send a thought. And then you monitor when the thought has arrived in the target. And those who have done it will tell you they are able to send a thought because scripture says, my words are those that go forth out of my mouth, they will return to me empty. So you have a thought, you identify its sensory values, and you send a thought. Meditation gives you the opportunity. It's all about inner journey. The kingdom of God is where? I don't hear you. Louder. The kingdom of God is where? Within. Meditation is the practice of going within. And you must do it at least twice daily. Start by doing for only five minutes. Even a minute is better than nothing. One minute twice a day regularly is okay. But ideally five to ten minutes. And then you may go longer only when you find it joyful. Don't stress yourself by sitting for one hour meditating. When your ankles are hurting you, you are doing what? Cockroach meditation. The attention is on the ankle. Not on God. Or whatever you are focusing on. Yes. Then we come to what we call the technologies, the meditation technologies, Ethereum mission technologies. And you know we have so many. Somebody pick a mic, pick the mic, and I want any, everybody, please glorify your God. Raise a hand, they come to you. And all I want you, you to say is, mention a meditation technology you use. You get up and you say, I use, and then you mention, I use, and then mention, one or two meditation technologies you use, but just one will be enough. So let's start from the choir here. Anybody? Your name? I use contemplative and realization meditation. Good. But I want us to talk about our technologies. Any of the technologies you have used? Good. I use positive expectation technology. Good. This is to enable me to know that you are all aware what when, when we say technologies, what they, they are. I use creative abundance technology. Yes. You use the cosmic possession technology. Mm -hmm. Five to your 
Okay. The all expansive self. Oh, that's a wonderful one. Yes. It expands your psyche so you go beyond the physical body and embrace the universe. Yes. You use wala. Ah, wala. So you connect with the cosmos and bring the healing energy to your body and direct it to others. Mm -hmm. Ah, you use spiritual persona to discover who and what you you are, so you can be anchored. And that is creative substance, right? Creative substance in the beginning, right? You use center of love, good. You use cosmic eye, good. Because it makes you to connect with the eye of everybody on the planet and you go to the source of the eye which is God. Yes? My name is Center of Love. Center of Love by activating all the love you felt before and amplifying that love energy. Yes? My name is Shantetra. I use sacred greetings. Sacred greetings because every moment you meet with somebody it becomes a holy moment and you'll find the noble idea of God in every interaction with the sacred greetings. Yes? So mystic pendulum so that you are anchored and you don't have any external vibration interfering with your psyche. Mm -hmm. Cosmic description. You describe what is working in life then what is not working will eavesdrop and begin to work. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I use possession and the Have your body. Have eyes. Have the sun. Have God. Have God. Amen. So are we clear? These are technologies. And I believe if we have time, we've had a lot of these already on our screen those who have used it and the great benefits and miracles they've experienced in their lives. And these are what we, I call living miracle. The power is in your hands. The power is what the pastor did it for you. Exact processes. And the reason why they work is that they are organic. They are a blend of the nature of your spirit. A theory mission devotes itself in the study of what the spirit is like. The nature of the spirit, the nature of the mind. Then the nature of the senses of sight, smell, taste, and touch, and hearing. How these receive information into you, and by a blend of this, with nature itself. Nature shows the magnitude and the working laws of God. At Human Mission, we are not church Christians. We are Jesus Christians. In fact, I find it so strange that people go to church which is supposed to teach them spirituality, and there's no spirituality teaching in the churches. <laughs> the Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, that God created us in his spiritual image and likeness. In Genesis 2, 7, and then God breathed the spiritual you into the dust, and you became a living soul. When we go through even scripture further, the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 44 says there is a natural body and then there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 tells you, Know you not that you are the temple of the living God and the spirit of God dwells in you. There are people who are even afraid of the word spirit. Yet Jesus told us in John 4 24 that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All these confirm to us that you are a dual being. You have a natural human body, and then you have a spiritual body. And for each of these, you need the appropriate education for a holistic life. We receive natural education by secular education. Secular education takes you from primary school all the way to university. For you to be able to provide for yourself good food, clothing, and shelter. Yet without the spirit, even the natural physical body is not animated to live. 
we're supposed to receive spiritual education from our spiritual or religious institutions, such as our churches, our mosques, whatever religion you belong to. But when it comes to spiritual education, almost all religious bodies are empty. I find it strange that you know you are spirit. You go to church for you to receive spiritual education. And you know the church is not giving you any spiritual education, yet people keep going. Wow. That's why I invite you to Ethereum Mission. Like I said, we are not church Christians. We are Jesus Christians. We follow what the master taught, that you are spirit, and the spirit of God dwells in you as you. The kingdom of God is within you, said the master, meaning the power, love, and the spiritual presence of God is within you. Hmm. I welcome you to spiritual study and growth in Ethereum mission. Ideally, look for any Ethereum mission branch and start your spiritual evolution. Because the first blessing God gave you was also your absolute imperative. It said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Meaning that, that you are the very seeds of God or the seed that God is, the presence that God is, is in you as seeds. And you are to grow them into trees and bear fruits of peace, love, joy. That's what the book of Galatians told you, Galatians 5, 22 to 23. If you want spiritual growth, then you know where to come to. Peace.